And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have a newcomer to the temple and a returning brother to the temple. Starting with starting with the new blood, we have coming to, coming to us all the way from from Slovakia with it with and is and a woman surrounded by around surrounded by wolves and werewolves. Near the one and only Nerium and a ma a man who was who was playing second to my most unstable interview that I've done in this series, the king of the gays agenda, good old Red Gaze himself. How you how you two doing tonight? Yeah, doing well, doing very well. Yeah, yeah, pretty good, pretty good. Uh, a little bit tired Sunday, but in a good way, in a good way. Well, it is Sunday, and that's kind of, and that's how that's how it works. Yeah, Sundays are always tiring, and it's it's always a good day to just you know kick back and not have to think about things for a minute. Because we do we, we all do too much thinking, I think, and th thinking can be just as taxing as as physical things, you know. Yep. Exactly, and when you have like a like an exhausting Friday and and even more exhausting Saturday, you know, then you have a you have a day to chill. Mm -hmm. um, of course, of course, I'm not I'm not one to talk when it comes when it comes to relaxing, given given the ins given the insane amount of work I end up have, having to do. But it, but the but the sent but the sentiment is definitely something I can endorse. Um. So, I'll start. I'll, I'll. So you two are you two are working together on the follow up to um to the to the first Sunsworn novel. In this case, a comic known as Wings of Vengeance. Correct, and I might I might add you're one of the first to actually get that correct. Yes, it's a <laughs> it's a follow up <laughs> to the first novel. Mm -hmm. uh, in between the first and the second. Uh, it is a standalone story, so it's uh, it can be enjoyed on its own or as part of the, you know, the flowing story. But um, yeah, a lot of people get confused with that. So thank you, thank you yeah. for picking that up. Um, it it's all it's all about an eye for detail. But that that does bring that does bring me to to the first question. This this idea of doing a standalone comic within the, um, sun sunsworn not sunsworn non cinematic universe. <laughs> um, yeah. Was... Um, Miriam, could you knock? Could you knock on wood? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I I have a I I don't like to tempt the gods of irony. Um. But he, but even so, was the. Because I I remember I remember when I had you when I had you on previously, Gaze. You had talked you had talked about um, the first book being a, being the first entry in a series. Was the idea of doing stand a standalone comic part of the part of the overall plan that you had? Yeah, that's that's been in my head for a long time. Uh, about I don't know, maybe about halfway through the first uh, crowdfund, I was thinking, you know what? Why don't we do a a comic in between? Maybe even two, um, just because there's plenty of time, and you know, because as everyone well i don't know if everyone knows or not if you don't realize it takes quite a bit of time to write a novel <laughs> so there's uh there's plenty of time to do some other things and you know we mix it up with the, the comics gate community mm -hmm. and uh they you know they the first novel was really well received by that community and i i love that but uh, i wanted to see you know if they if a comic would uh, be just as well received or even more so so it's in a way it's an experiment in a way it's something i just kind of wanted to do anyway and it's really, I always wanted to see these characters more brought to life more visually. And what better way to do that than a comic, you know, for now with the resources we have. And uh, I managed to get uh, one of the best artists around mm -hmm. on that comic. So it's turning out really, really well. And I'm loving every minute of it. Yeah. And that does, that does, bring, an in, that does bring an interesting point. Because the, co the comic... In when it comes to do when it comes to doing this kind of comic, I'm I'm also, and the whole seeing that seeing a visual um, representation of the characters from the from the novel, um, 
I distinctly remember one of the one of the key things that that you had that you had presented and we had talked about when it came to ed, when it came to Edge of Annihilation was the visual companion. Yes. And I'm curious if that was what laid the groundwork for the for the creation of the comic. Kind of, yeah, I would say so, uh, because yeah, that was the whole point of the visual companion, right? To kind of visually introduce people to the universe. Because uh, obviously nobody knew what it was except for me at that point. So, yeah, that was the whole concept behind the visual companion to get more obviously visual with it and uh, just present the universe to the readers in a different way. But yeah, that experience really did it, it helped a lot in in informing the groundwork for the comic. Mm -hmm. uh, but the comic itself, uh, I'm really excited about because it's just. Uh, you know, it's one thing to have, um, you know, just uh, representations of the characters, you know, like um, still images, things like that. Um, but it's it's a completely different beast when you see these characters actually coming to life and doing things and, you know, battling and talking to each other and just interacting in totally different ways. So that that's really cool to see. Mm -hmm. oh, it's near me. You're about, you're about to say something. No, 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 I'm, you know, when it when it comes to the, the story part and origins part and creative part, I'm pretty pretty sure, you know, that's that's cases, um, you know, a part because because he he pretty practically created. But I can I can tell you a little bit more when it comes to artistic side if you want. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, I was really interested in the in the whole concept in the in the, in the whole project and. Like uh, originally, we were doing uh, a little bit different, different story. But you know, um, I just decided. Uh, well, we decided that this would be a this this will be a better idea. So, mm -hmm. kind of, you know. Right now, I'm drawing as well, so that's why I'm, <laughs> you know, a little bit. Oh <laughs> well, no, yeah. I'm not. I'm not going to. I'm not going to. Um, th I'm not going to thumb my nose at at multitasking. Um, and speaking of speaking of that, Miriam, how 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 did you get, how did you get in co get in contact with um, Gaze? Was it a case where he got he got in touch with you? Was it the other way around? How did you how did you get involved in this particular endeavor? Yeah, it was it was kind of the other way around, as you mentioned, uh, because uh, I joined Twitter. Um, because I was I was kind of working on my own project, the Bonds um, project, the Werewolf comic, and as I already mentioned to you in a in a back room, I'm not from from US, so I had a really big problem with uh, with actually going out, getting getting the comic out through Indiegogo because Indiegogo doesn't support my country, so I needed to find um, somebody who who could help me with that part, and so um, I asked. Uh, Red Gaze to, to help me with that. He be, practically became my manager, you know, because also I was really new to crowdfunding and uh, have had like no experience with that. And I know that he was in the middle of it. So he had, you know, information from, from the first hand. And also he's a friend. So yeah, I mean, that's, that's why we clicked immediately. And you know, since he helped me to get through a lot of hardships on, on that campaign, uh, it's, it's a kind of way, um, of, of my way of a, of a thank you, you know? Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. And he also, also took a, took a part of writing part on my own campaign. So, you know, we're, we're helping, helping each other because that's what, that's what people should do. Yeah. Now, when it, now, when it comes to the story, the story of um, wings of vengeance, now, because it's me, I ha I have to I have to address the con the continuity elephant in the room, who's take who's currently <laughs> sitting on my couch. Um, does a, does Wings of Vengeance take place before or after Edge of Annihilation? It takes place after Edge of Annihilation, uh, between Edge of Annihilation and uh, March of the Dominion. This is what the next novel is going to be called. Mm -hmm. uh, there's going to be about a year's worth of of time. In between those stories, uh, so this is going to fill in just a little gap of that. But uh, yeah, again, it's just it's a it's meant to be like just a fun, you know, action-packed, fast-paced story to uh, you know uh, I don't know satisfy you know the the cravings 
of uh, the, the few Sunsworn fans that are out there until the next story comes out. Yeah. Um, but ev- even with, even with that, it's it sounded like you've made you you've made the intent of trying to make it so that the that you don't that a lot that a whole lot of forward knowledge isn't ne- isn't necessarily needed. You can read this as a standalone if you want. Correct. Yes, absolutely. Because I, yeah, I know not everybody uh, enjoys novels and vice versa. Not everybody enjoys comics. So if you enjoy one or the other, you, yeah, you'll be able to enjoy these separately, uh, independently. And if you enjoy both, yeah, feel free. Mm-hmm. Get on for the full ride. That's what I encourage everyone to do. But yeah, everyone has their own taste. Yeah. Every- and so everyone has their own taste and I'm pretty sh- I'm pretty sure for some for somebody that taste is re- is reading the whole thing mirror written which unfortunately I don't think any of us are going to be accommodating but um it is what it is <laughs> and when it and give, given that especially one of the things that I want one of the things that I obviously wanted to bring up early on was the um vi- was the visual companion um, was when it came to when it came to establishing the look of this particular comic, was that used as a kind of visual bible as you were set as you as you two were setting things up? Kind of, but not really. Um, there there were some characters that were presented in there, uh, but um, I went ahead and kind of gave uh, Miriam a, a bit of free range um, on redesigning some of the characters a bit, and uh, it's. You know, it'll, it'll make sense within the story. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, yes and no, uh, because there's some iconic characters that are presented in there. Uh, but they did kind of change up a little bit as far as aesthetics, you know, just a touch here and there. Um, so, yeah, I mean, obviously we had to keep those characters at least, you know, somewhat the same, right? Because you don't want to just go full-blown, okay, this is wacky and wild and a completely different character. Mm-hmm. But, uh, I mean, you can definitely recognize the characters from the visual companion to the comic. Yeah. Yeah, I think I've been punished by my own creativity when it comes to the redesign. <laughs> um, what do you mean by that? Well, um, originally it kind of all started by, by uh, me drawing some, some redesigns, you know, just the standalone pictures for the new characters without the intent of drawing the comic. And so I just went full crazy, you know, full bananas on those designs, you know, like tons of details and, and lines and, and accessories and, and, you know, things like that. And then suddenly there, the, then it became like, okay, you're going to draw the comic. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> because now I need to draw all those details that I came up with in every single panel. And like, oh, okay, I, I don't mind characters like Trip or, or Ginny because, you know, that's that's normal. That's like you, you draw a jacket or you, you draw a cloak, but, but Esther, Esther and his armor and and the plates and, and the metal and the accessories and details here and there, oh my, that, that's, a, that's, that's a suicide mission. <laughs> what was it a, because of that did you, when it came to the details did you find your did you find yourself having to dial some of it back for the sake of your own sanity uh like um to reduce those details yeah that, that's my problem i'm a i'm a i'm an art nazi right so i'm trying to put uh, as much details as i can in in even the tiny slightest tiniest panel and yeah yeah that's that's i think i'm gonna um be a positive when it comes to the printing part and people are going to see all those details even in the slightest panels Mm -hmm. so but yeah it's 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 kind of it's kind of like i said um i got punished by myself so oh as as the saying goes an artist is their own worst critic yeah um and i've and I've 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 had I've spoken with some other artists in the past, and some of them have sworn bloody murder at the at the idea of having to draw or, or color armor. Was was there a sim, <laughs> was there a similar situation in your case with with the um, armor details? How to put it? I came in with the idea that I can't draw armor and can't draw metal, and and yeah, um, I'm still learning. I'm still learning how to do it. Um, 
it's slowly getting better you know it's a, like i said it's a very big difference when you're drawing a standalone cover a standalone picture where you can pretty much go as well because you're drawing it only once right and but when you when you're trying to repeat that all over again and again and again with all the amount of details and everything that's that's like i said it's a little banana so if I, yeah, I, I just want to disagree quickly. Um, she's been claiming she can't draw armor since day one. And <laughs> since day one, she drew Aster and redesigned his armor, and it looks absolutely beautiful. Mm -hmm. And transitioning that to the comic pages, uh, she's spared nothing. Like, it, it still looks just as beautiful, just as intricately detailed. And, uh, yeah, she's full of crap. Yeah. She can draw armor very well. How <laughs> <laughs> um, dare you? <laughs> Are we gonna be doing? Are we gonna be doing this Abbott and Costello, Costello thing today? <laughs> it's possible. <laughs> um, but but, and the more I th the more I think about, it, the more I do, the more I do see a, a bit more distinctive um, difference between between the designs. Che chiefly among it is the f is the fact that, um. As ter as Ter's set up in Wings of Vengeance, as far as I'm, as far as I'm able to see it, is a lot is a lot less plate and a lot a lot more scale, for lack of a better term. Kind of, sort of. There was uh, that's kind of how he was always intended to be. And again, as that, as that was my first project, mm -hmm. I was a lot more lenient um, when when working with the artists on the first project, and uh, maybe then didn't uh, redirect as much as I should have because, you know, I was, I was fresh to this. I didn't really know what I was doing and I was seeing my characters brought to life for the very first time. So I saw them on paper and I was like, oh, shit, that's my character. Nice. And, um, you know, but then uh, the Nerium came in and she said, I'm going to redesign these characters. I said, okay. And she asked what, you know, what I was envisioning. And, you know, I kind of, what I did was there was a good amount of fan art uh, that was drawn for the original campaign as well. And uh, I took like elements of that that I felt that different artists got correct as to what I was picturing in my mind, and presented all that to her. And she came up with the, the this is the definitive version of Aster Sunsworn. This is what I've been picturing since before I even knew Miriam. So I can't, yeah, I can't even thank you enough just for that. Mm -hmm. And in, in that re in that regard, were there some general um some general do some general do's and don'ts that that I, and that's that's probably not the best that's probably not the best way for me to word, but just a general guide on what to emphasize and what to not and what to avoid when it comes to the design. Yeah, the horns, the horns, the damn horns. <laughs> she hates the horns. I hate the horns because damn, 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 damn. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. No, 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 no. Seriously, like when I when I look uh, at his at his armor, like I, I I just have this armor in front of my eyes. Uh, seriously, the horns are the the smallest problem I ever had there. I just realized I have the biggest problem with with the with the hip plates. Hip plates are are the killer, and yeah, we, we're gonna have to discuss this later because thank <laughs> you. I, I think I'm gonna strip him. He's gonna just walk around naked throughout the whole comic, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> Is that seems to be kid friendly now. <laughs> okay, what the kid, hell? I mean, what the, can... Gaze, what the hell are you talking about? Kid friendly? Do you do, have you forgotten well, what somewhere. show you're on? <laughs> I mean, no, I mean, I'm at the I mean, comic I mean, itself. You know, not you know, not necessarily you know toddlers, but yeah, no, we don't really want balls swinging around. <laughs> Come on, no balls. I mean, what, what, what we can do, what we can do is is either ask Trip nicely and politely to um, form some kind of crystal shield over his, you know, over his junk, or. <laughs> but no, no, no. Seriously, seriously, the the hip plates are are probably the the, the hardest part. But the thing uh, we were mentioning the, the the like most often was was the horns because there was this one panel, one shot uh, from you know like frontal view where I was supposed to draw his horns on the helmet. Mm -hmm. Uh, and Red was like, no, no, that's wrong, that's wrong. Uh, it needs to be closer to his helmet. No, that's wrong, that's wrong. Okay, <laughs> sort, sort of really wrong. And then he finally pulled up the, the variant cover from Vinny Cardamella, where he showed me, like, okay, I want these horns to look like this, you know, to be pressed to the to the, to the the helmet. And I was like, okay, damn, damn, fourth time, fourth time. Is this okay? And then he was finally, like, yes, this is okay. <laughs> it was just one panel. Yeah, because I I decided not to repeat my mistake. 
Well, you d you did j you did call yourself an art Nazi five minutes ago, so that's why I decided to redraw it five times. Four, I'm sorry, four times. <laughs> I, I can de at the at the and I can I can definitely see th that because there's a um there's a noticeable difference between the hor horn setup in um, Edge of Annihilation versus Wings of Vengeance. Um, in the latter case, it looks a lot more um, RAM-like. Yeah, yeah, and that was always the intention as well. And there was a, a subtle color change as well. And as far as the armor changes go, um, there's going to be a, a little bit to explain that away. There already is, because the, the Astral Templar's armor kind of forms to their will, right? So they can do practically anything they want with it. So again, like there's no, there's no real continuity error there. Um, the, the corn colors did change from, they were initially white, but, uh, when we were working on, I was working on the, the redesign with Miriam, she was like, well, I think they look a lot better black. And I wasn't fully convinced until she made them black. And then I was fully convinced and yeah, I was like, you're right. You're right. Maybe a black, blackish gray, you know, it, it turned out really well. I mean, most of the, most of the designs there and, the, you know, changes that we did on the characters were like pretty much done live, you know, like I was drawing, he was watching. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, if, if there was a problem with visual visualizing, I just, you know, okay, let me let me show you how it would look. And for example, Genie's, Genie's overall was originally, what was the color? Like dark blue? It was, well, initially it was brown. Uh, from the cover of the first book, it was brown. But uh, we changed, <laughs> yeah, the overalls that the, she's wearing in the redesign, yeah, they were initially dark blue, but yeah, go on, Miriam. Yeah, that's that's pr that's pretty much it. Like originally, it was brown, but uh, when I was drawing the the cover, the brown just you know it made Jean disappear. So we were just tweaking with that, and it pretty much looked like um, I just colored the the uniform and showed like like five different variants of colors until we we agreed on a teal blue, right? So that's that's pretty much how we work with all of the characters and any changes that before we applied, you know, any change I made, we first consulted and pretty much did the visual and then it was done. Yeah. And it's fun it's funny that it's funny that you that you had that you had made the that 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 jo that joke of that joke about uh, about um about le about alternatives to to armor with we with wearing as little as possible. Since in one of the pre in one of the preview um, pages, we ha we ha we have the guy shirtless and <laughs> and give and giving me far and giving me a few far too many um fla a few far too many flashbacks to eight to eight to cheesy eighties fantasy movies that I that I had seen over the years. Yeah, man. Well, that's all part of it, right? Because I, I want some of that, that 80s cheese in there a little bit. And it was also kind of throwing a bone to Nerium as well, because she was having a stroke over the the armor. And I said, tell you what, they're training in this scene, right? So, you know, he can go, yeah, he can go a little light. Uh, we'll, we'll tackle the armor more later on when he's actually in, you know, life-threatening uh, battle. But for this one, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and the ladies will like it too, right? Okay, and just so you know, in the in the in the life threatening situation, uh, in the in the later part of the story, I I would like to suggest that he's gonna lose a part of his armor in the battle, uh, except some some I don't know some some parts that cover his junk. <laughs> I knew that was coming. Come <laughs> <laughs> um, on, ladies love apps. You know the the sad the sad part about this is that is that I just know. That in some that in some future in, in some future crowdfund, someone someone is going someone is going to put Crystal Cup as a request for a stretch goal. <laughs> yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> crystal Cup or Crystal Cap? Cup, ball cup. Ball, oh my god! <laughs> you have no one to blame for this but yourself. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, never mind, never mind. <laughs> I can, you know, okay, fine. Oh my god, I need to sleep. <laughs> I'm gonna dream about it, and that's the, that's the worst part of it. You're, you're <laughs> get, you're, you are gonna be, th you're gonna be thinking about it because that's the, that is the rabbit hole you put, you put yourself up to. You know what? You know what? That fine, fine. I can do it. I can handle it. I'm gonna dream about it for, for the following month. 
fucking draw it like that because I don't want to show that armor anymore. Hey, uh, I did. Did I? I did. O I did open this up with the, with this being the open bar of the internet. So this is how this is how things work around here. Oh no no no! Like seriously, um, yeah, the armor armor is a challenge. That's true. But then again, challenges are kind of necessary in our lives, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes we can make something easy. For example, I can already tell that Red eased up the very beginning to me to uh, for for me in the initial pages for the training, for example, because yeah, that's that's another thing. Um, this this comic is is colored. The one that I did previously was black and white, done done com in a completely different style, and he he pretty much like gave me time or maybe some space to adapt to a completely new drawing style because I can go like fully, fully crazy on the inking and, you know, on the black parts. So uh, I think I'm going to get to to the armor sooner or later. And if not, then, you know, then you're just going to see some article in the news that the young, young Slovak um, comic artist jumped out, jumped out of the window because of the despair <laughs> of drawing armor. <laughs> um, no, no, none of that. None of that. None, none of that. Bye. None of that, please. Um, Although speaking of that, since you mentioned that in previous stuff you usually do um usually do um, black and white and you're, and now you're de now you're dealing with color, um how much of how much of a change is that when it com when it comes to when it comes to adjusting habits? Um, say it again. Um, I'm just saying how how much of how much of a how much of a change is it to uh, to adjust from from do, from doing black and white primarily to having to accommodate for the fact that this is going to be in color. Well, for me, um, it's it's a completely different different approach to the whole thing because um, when I was doing black and white, uh, I was pretty much putting the coloring there, but in a form of shade parts, you know, like gray gray tones. Yeah. So I was pretty much doing the the, the blacks and and. Um, shades myself you know but since shades are also some kind of form of black and white uh, it was it was easier for me to do and right now with this comic I can't go like totally crazy when it comes to the dark parts because uh, there needs to be some space for the for the colors mm -hmm. now when it comes now when it comes to when it came to the um when it came when it came to the way the way panels are are set up, I at least with at least with the pages that I that I had that I had seen, um, maybe I'm maybe I'm reading too much into this, but I noticed an interesting pattern where a lot of where there's a lot of an emphasis on on ha on a on a horizontal nature to the way panels are set are set up, almost like almost like in horizontal rows. Mm -hmm. was yeah was, that's 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 not going to be completely throughout um there's there there are a fair amount of uh, more vertical centered pages as well as and also some uh there's there's going to be a few full plate full pages and a few uh double page splashes that i'm sure nearing is looking forward to mm -hmm. i mean yeah um that's that's pretty much what i what i i seriously do um look forward to because the I like drawing bigger panels. Um, I know that Western comics are more into trying to stuff uh, more panels with more story on one page and I'm more used to a manga style where where sometimes you, you can see like two or three panels per, per one page because you can just go crazy with the details, you can go uh, crazy with the neatness of the, you know, with mm -hmm. how, how the page is neat and uh, yeah, that's that's what I uh, really look forward to because you know you just can do, can do what you want to do. So yeah. And in the in that reg in that regard, um, since you since you mentioned since you mentioned the difference between between um, anime and co and comics in that regard, would you would you say the approach that you've been go been going for with Sun with Sunsworn is kind of a hybrid of the two. Um, I mean, yeah, I think the the whole point was that that 
uh, Red Red Gaze kind of asked me, so I think he he knew what he was going with because uh, I already mentioned that when I when I was promoting Bounce, you know, my comic uh, Bounce is a hybrid, uh, and I'm really really saying it with with pride because um, I was trying to go as real as possible, like realistic style, and try to follow the the Western maybe um, styles and and uh, influences, but. Uh, I don't know. You know. You know. I've been used to drawing, drawing uh, manga style uh, for a very long time, and uh, no matter how much I tried to to uh, reshape my my drawing style into the Western style, uh, my hand kind of normally naturally shifts back to the style it it is already used. So it's a hybrid in this case as well. Yeah, and I think I think the hybrid style really really suits the environment as well. I I love I love Miriam's style, and I wouldn't uh, <laughs> like never in a million years did I dream that this would come together and look as good as it does. So yeah, I love that style, and I think I think a meshing of the two. Like you're seeing a lot more of that lately too. Uh, a lot of not necessarily one or the other, but yeah, there's a bit of of hybrid going on, and I think there's a a bit of a craving for that. I'd I'd say I'd say that's something that. I I remember in um I remember in t I remember in the early 2000s when when there when there was real when there was a huge debate about what about whether certain works um qualified at qualified as anime or qual or qualified as comics because the line was starting to was starting to get blurry and it was starting to piss off the traditionalists on both sides um <laughs> I had I had posited that you were, that people were going to see more of that because you were going to be dealing with entire generations that did not gr that did not grow up with tradition that with more traditional influences. You were going to deal with Western audiences that grew up with that grew up and were inspired by the sensibilities of manga, and and vice versa, and um. Or, or in some cases, pe people just t people just taking a grab bag out of every out of everything they could get their hands on, and that was and that was only going to increase, and that line was going to get blurrier and blurrier with time, and I think I've been borne out on that. I'm not going to claim to be Nostradamus or anything, but I think I was on point there. Yeah, uh, at so some cool. at some point those stars 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 are gonna merge uh, in a way. I mean, there's always gonna be people who incline more into the Western style because they claim it, you know, you know, to be to be typical comic um, thing. And uh, there are also gonna be people who are gonna more inclined to to manga because because you know manga is manga. It's it's popular and it's uh, slowly climbing its way to to our parts of the world as well. If if it already hadn't, but uh, what we're gonna see is the merge of these two styles, and and it's normal. That's called evolution. Um, like there are gonna be there are gonna be mixtures of these styles when it comes to either effects or when it comes to the the panel layout or anything like that. You know. Yeah, and I think it is natural, especially because there's you know a lot of people have fled the mainstream Western comic industry. For the manga industry because they you know they feel like they've been abandoned uh because they're getting a lot of trash and junk coming out of you know the the stories they used to love the characters they used to love that are just garbage now so there's been a lot of migration to manga and especially if you have artists who were you know more focused on the western style as a part of that migration i mean it's only natural i think that they would pick up some manga influences as well as, and that would influence their art so mm -hmm. i think it's kind of a natural progression which, yeah, it's gonna happen. And um, I'd al I'd also see I had seen this I'd seen this kind of thing e even more so in um, in tabletop gaming, which is one of my expertises, and that and and <laughs> that pissed off a lot of the more the more traditional um fo folks. Um, but I'd fi I'd figured that it I'd figured that it was going to going to blur in the in the same sense that you're going to see um. Much like how you look at a you look at a film director like Tarantino, who was inspired by a lot of the grindhouse stuff that he saw in the seventies, you're gonna see you're gonna see um a lot of people be inspired by growing up with Tarantino's work. Um, it's ju it's just a na it's just a natural process. Art I've often said that art um is a response to other art. 
Yeah, that's for sure. And as far as far as the tabletop stuff goes, like I'm I'm an old head with all this stuff. I'm like old school comics, old school tabletop RPGs, and this doesn't bother me at all. I think a lot of the 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 hybrid art actually looks a lot better than what we're used to. And to, I mean to be to be frank, like some of the old uh, RPG art that we would get, I didn't care for. I thought it just some of it looked wonky. Like the the painted styles were always good, right? But the the drawings underneath that formed those weren't always the best if we're going to be honest some of those look pretty pretty crappy and it's really only the the, the painting and the coloring that saved it uh, so i yeah i i'm all about it i'm all about this move forward like actual progression rather than you know this this regressive progression that we've been seeing lately or or in some or in some cases this nostalgia for its for its own sake um I could yeah. I could I could rant I could rant about the cir the circular nature of the old school renaissance but I'm getting ahead of myself. Um now when it com now when it comes to um the narrative that you ha that you have with um with wi with wings of Ven with wings of vengeance um was the was the approach that you were going for kind of a kind of a episode kind of a episode two like like thing, where the where you're dealing with people just trying to, just trying to pick up the pieces? Kind of, sort of, yeah. That's that's part of the theme of it, because um, yeah, in the events of the first novel, there's yeah a big galactic war that takes place. Invaders uh, come into the astral union and just kind of wreak havoc on things. So. What was once uh, a near utopic society is now, yeah, they're left picking up the pieces and trying to figure out what they're going to do. You know, there's millions, millions dead. There's entire planets that have been uh, wiped out practically, and uh, even some of their their core structure has been destroyed. So they they really are in a, a rebuild process. And uh, this is, yeah, it's just kind of a story. What they're dealing with in this story is remnants of that invading force uh, that still occupy a world. And are holding um, a very important hostage. Uh, so we have some heroes from the the novel that are going to come in and try to retake that world, as well as you know get get rid of these remnants and uh, save someone who may be very important to the uh, the rebuilding of their galaxy. Mm -hmm. And to the to that to that particular um, to that particular end, um, when it comes. When it, the other the other reason why I want why I wanted to make that analogy is well for starters you've you've opened you've opened yourself up to to um, to certain Star Wars comparisons. <laughs> of course, yeah. Um, <laughs> made, made that clear the last time I had you on, but there's also the there's also the fact that you are um that you're fo that it seems like you're focusing on a on a three character trinity, which was which. Is something that is something that is pr is pretty well is pretty well established when it comes to when it comes to fiction the whole um, id ego super ego thing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. There's uh, these are three of the most uh, important characters in the book uh, as far as and in the story I should say because as far as uh, the the story as it's going to be progressing yeah these three in particular will all play very important roles. So yeah, it wasn't. I did. I did kind of. Uh, I don't know. I, I tossed around the ideas in my head of what I wanted to do with the comic. Like I thought about just sticking with strictly side characters, uh, and you know something they might they might have to tackle in between the events of the novels. Um, but I think I don't know. I, I think for for starters, people would probably want to see some of the more prominent characters in the comic. So that that's what I went with, and this is. And it was pretty. It flowed pretty naturally into these three characters coming into this particular story. So, as long as I'm all about, uh, like you said, continuity and story. As as long as it makes sense in the story, I have no problem with it. If it if it's something that I don't know, kind of takes the wheels off the wagon just for the sake of using a character or, you know, staging an event, then that, I'm not going to do it. it. It has to all flow naturally. Mm -hmm. Which it which. Is definitely is definitely apropos, and it's that's the reason why I asked about the notion of a of a series bible, which I'd like to take credit with for the for the naming it for the for the naming as as such in that case, but I can't. Um, it was it was something that was that was something that was brought up to me when I was 
in co in conversation with a um with someone who's worked on te on um television shows and he had he had brought up the um the import the importance of a the importance of a series bible so so that there's a groundwork for what for what you should and shouldn't do when exp when expanding a given story or working in a story's universe mm -hmm. um i think even doom has one even though Doom doesn't have much of a story, it still has a there is still a <laughs> Doom Bible. Oh. Right. I kind of I don't know. Like I don't have anything set out for that. I have a lot of outlines. I have a lot of notes, and I have a lot of stuff that's still in my brain. But uh, that's that's the Bible I'm working off of uh, for the time being. Like each each campaign is going to get better and better uh, visually as well as just every every aspect of it. Cause that that's what I mean to do. Uh, like I did as well as I could on the first campaign. Uh, the visual companions you're going to see going up a notch, definitely. And uh, it, at some point, probably either with the third novel or not too far behind it, there's going to be something very similar to uh, like a, a series Bible that will be presented. You know, maybe like an ultimate visual companion, something along those lines. Mm -hmm. And in the and in that in that particular re that particular regard now you're go you you two are going with thumb with it's it said 52 plus um pages is the plus to accommodate for stretch goals yeah let's say 60. <laughs> the the plus is to accommodate for uh like we're we're always um you know this is a completely collaborative process so we're, we're always going back and forth on pretty much each and every page and um you know sometimes I, I might have a tendency to jam a little too much action into one panel. And when I do that, uh, Miriam will point that out to me and say, hey, can we like split this up into two or three panels just to kind of, so it's not so much jammed in there and not, not so forced. And that's that's what we've been doing. So yeah, the pages have been expanding and that, that's what the plus is for. So it could be, yeah, it's probably going to be in the range of 60 at this point. Yeah, that's one thing. And the uh, second thing is, you know, sometimes, like I said, like Red Red has the foundation in Western comics, right? I have a foundation in, in manga. So sometimes it's just when I read the script, you know, I, I can see it, you know, revolve in front of my eyes like 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 a film, like a movie. And sometimes when you watch a movie, you know, you see different different camera angles, different camera shots and uh when I when I see it, see that and for example there is sometimes there is a there is a little panel that it, I just feel it should be there, you know. Uh, so sometimes what I do is add a panel here and there, and suddenly you realize that uh, in the original page that was supposed to be somewhere around seven panels, we suddenly have nine, and that is too much, you know. That that's just too much. So what we do is split one page into two. That's why we were grow That's why we are kind of growing. Like pretty much we were starting with 48, pa 48 pages of script. It grew to 52 with ease and uh, i'm not afraid to say that we're slowly gonna grow even higher so it's gonna be like 52 plus pages of a uh, of a comic it itself right mm -hmm. and when when you mentioned the whole when you mentioned the whole thing of looking at it like a film that that brings me to something that i've i've seen i've seen plenty of artists um either struggle with or or curse whatever's whatever's within earshot with, and that is drawing action. Um, piece of cake. Say again. Piece of cake. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've no, seen... seriously, seriously. Uh, I've uh, encountered this question when I was drawing my my comic bonds, and uh, there, you know, it's uh, except besides besides the fact that it's about werewolves, it's about it's about uh, martial arts fights. Right. Uh, what what I did when I was trying to to portray the action in in the in these particular scenes was, for example, not not look at some static pictures of poses of from martial arts, but I, I was directly looking at videos, you know, or movies like uh, Undisputed or or things like that. So you can you can pretty much see how the movement is is. Uh, uh, executed, you know, uh, where where are the where the blurry lines are supposed to be, where the movement is coming from and to, and that when you when you get this, you know, you have the foundations, uh, 
for for the perfect uh, perfect action scene even if you don't for example use like heavy heavy perspective you can always uh, you know rely on on those uh blurry lines that can that can help you get some kind of action into that panel mm -hmm. and for example when i when i struggled with uh with uh that that's a funny story um, i'm i'm still gonna say it but uh when um when uh, i had a problem i had a problem with um um a particular you know like a swing of sword or or how to hold a sword or and i just couldn't couldn't really um portray and imagine how it how it should be like red red had no problem you know with with uh sending me a video here and there you know like just you could see basically just a hand swinging swinging a sword and and it really helped me a lot to understand how how the movement should be better, uh, executed and you know piece of cake that's that's what i see piece of cake yeah um it's just it's just one the reason i the reason i'd ask is it's it's definitely one of those where um where i can where i've seen i've seen some artists even one even ones that i like kind of um have kind of have issues with it um and of course and of course we of course we've all we've all seen how how certain artists in the big 2 are really good at are really good at drawing characters but when it comes to actually drawing action they struggle i'll I'll be um I'll be ki I'll be kind this once. I think I'm I think I, I'm supposed to only I'm I'm only needed to I only needed to do one good deed to get into heaven. So that's my one deed for the day. <laughs> well, that's that, honestly that's one of the things that attracted me to Nerium's style to begin with. Is like I did spend a lot of time looking at Bonds and I see how she draws action and that, like when she says piece of cake, I believed it. And not only did I believe it, but I've now seen it many many times. And yeah, like action is her thing. And that's one thing I wanted to do with this book is just have very fast-paced action going on throughout. So, I mean, I, when I say that the perfect person to draw this book is drawing this book, I mean it. Uh, you can see me right now, but I'm blushing, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> Look, flattery will get you everywhere. <laughs> of course, of course. Uh, I mean, that's that's uh, that's what we he, he's been doing, like from the from the very start. You know, that's why you know I keep productive like one hundred percent. No, I'm kidding. That's not one hundred percent. It's somewhere around two hundred by, by now. So, <laughs> um, and bes besides, I think besides, I think he's also doing this to make sure to make sure you don't do anything crazy when it comes to the armor. <laughs> ah. I'm, I'm keeping an eye on that, especially around the groin area, because you know she's she likes to play around. <laughs> So, so. Hey, phrasing. Groin area. What's the problem with that? I'm. I didn't say that. I'm drawing his. You know, um, never mind. Fine. I'm. Just, I'm just gonna say there's been a couple occasions where I've I've gotten some preview art with uh, things maybe in people's hands or you know around the groin that probably shouldn't be there. <laughs> You mean you mean that poking crystal? Come on, that crystal was you know it was meant to be there. It was meant to be there. I, I want to and, and just so you know, just so you know, I I can I can I would I would make a bet right here right now to to bet how many people are gonna notice that I I said I, I say one person and there's gonna be pale rider. I agree, I agree, but I mean, most crystals don't have balls. Is all I'm saying. Yeah. Oh. So. <laughs> And but you're forgetting one important thing. Trip is able to form pretty much anything. Yeah, you are correct. <laughs> <laughs> this is true, however, for the most part. Oh. <laughs> See, I set myself up for that one. Yeah. Think, uh, but can you just imagine that the, the trip just had one simple lewd moment where he just... Okay, man, let's do it. No. <laughs> oh, okay, never mind. <laughs> Yeah, how about this setting? Like uh, they are walking, uh, you know, somewhere in the in the desolate planet, and suddenly um, Esther says, "Okay, guys, I'm, it's too hot here. I'm just gonna drop all my um, armor and trip you cover me. Have a very want. Mm. That sounds an awful lot like uh, the opposite of plot convenience. That's artist convenience. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, oh no, maybe. I don't know. Maybe as an maybe as an extra maybe as an extra gag at the end of the book, possibly. And I'm go I'm going to stop I'm going to stop that line of thought now before I start giving it either of you ideas. Yeah, she doesn't need any more. Trust me. <laughs> but, ideas are there. Oh, no, it's just 
look, look, I've I've learned many times over the years, and yet I still keep falling for the same mistake. Never to tempt the gods of irony. It's not gods of irony. That's just you know that's crazy creativity. Uh, he he said he he chose the rightest person for the job. That doesn't mean he he didn't choose the the weakest, the weak, most wicked person for the job. job. <laughs> that's true. You know, it always can go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. and, and that's not a pun at all, is it? <laughs> no, 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 of course not. <laughs> oh my God, no, come on. Come on, that's, you know, you know I'm not that type of a person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what was that? No, I'm, no, no, I'm, pretty, I'm, pretty, sure you're, I'm pretty sure you're just a perfect innocent angel. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right, right, right. Yeah, who told you that? And that was the biggest liar on earth. <laughs> <laughs> Look, haven't you ever heard the liar's paradox? Everybody lies. Of course. Of course. That's not a problem. Yeah. But keep but keeping keeping all taking all that into account. And I I know that I know that printing can be an adventure even even before even before all this all this um pandemic shit went down. But Give, but um, given the fact that you that you are that you're at um, just just over five just over five thousand with twenty days to go, um, what would you be shooting for as far as a release window at the very least for the digital version? I know that the physical version is going to take a while longer. Yeah, the, they're probably I'm going to be shooting for the same date for both. Uh, mainly because if I shoot out a digital version and it starts to get out, or people start to show it too much, people who haven't gotten the physical version might get a little pissy. I've, that's become a thing uh, here and there. So I want to make sure everybody who backed gets what they backed at the same time. Yeah, that's one thing. And second, second thing is, you know, we just decided to take our sweet time to make sure that seriously, like all of the pages, all of the, all of the panels, all of the things that are supposed to be there are just need to be 100%. I never deliver work that's not 100%. So we're just not going to rush things, uh, you know, to, to send out the digital uh, and then, you know, do some some tweakings and up upgrades to to the to the physical, you know, phys physical copy. So uh, we're just going to take all the time that, that's needed to do it right and do it properly and, and then, then get it to people on both sides. Yes. Yeah, the October uh, delivery date is, that's projection with padding, right? So we were hoping to get it out as soon as possible. So there's a, there's a high probability, I would say, that it'll be coming out before that. But in, just in case that, you know, because there's, there's always little monkey wrenches that get thrown into everything. So just in case, yeah, we, we added a little bit of time on there to make sure that everything gets delivered as it's supposed to. Yeah, and I'm very, I, I'm seriously very thankful for that because you know, like working, I'm, I'm pretty much not, not finished with my project yet. It's, so there are still some, some tiny upgrades to do here and there. So uh, when I, when I learned that I got a little bit of this padding that that Red mentioned, it really eased up, you know, all that, all that pressure that I had because uh, not only did I draw, uh, I have a normal daily job, you know, that I have to attend to. So um, yeah, it helped a lot. And with and taking taking all that into account, I do I I will certainly be looking forward to how to how this kind how this kind of thing develops, especially since um a bit a bit of a side thing that I've that I've wanted to do with some of the Comicscape material that I've co that I've covered here in the temple is find some is find some way to integrate that with the other thing that I do well, but. That's that's a that's very much a story for another day, um, but with all, with all that said, I do want to sincerely thank both of you for taking the time out of your schedules to come onto the show and enjoy the insanity at play here. Oh, my and, pleasure, always. And, um, and not a problem. It's Sunday. Yep. And anytime you two, anytime either of you see fit to return to return to these hallowed grounds, the door is always open. As I often say around here, drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. I agree. I agree. That's that's actually a very good idea. <laughs> Cheers. That's why I'm gonna make a lemon water. <laughs> um, and of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. 
And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here on the open bar of the Internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty, everybody!